Hi, my name is Swaraj and I'm part of the Cisco Tag Firewall team. I'm going to be talking about FTP, specifically how the ASA handles this protocol. Now, FTP, as we all know, is a dual channel protocol. First, we have a command channel which gets established. This connection is initiated by the client. Now, the secondary connection which gets opened is called the data channel over which the actual file transfer happens. Based on the negotiation over the command channel, this can either be initiated by the client or the server. FTP can operate in two modes based on the kind of client. It's either an active client or a passive client. Let's take a look at active client FTP. This is how the flow works uh, in an active client FTP. So as we can see, the initial connection is always established by the client on destination port 21 of the server. The source port that the client uses is of course greater than 1023. Once the client and server authenticate successfully, a port command is sent. This port command carries the information which is sent by the client telling that it is active and it carries information regarding the IP address and port on which the server should initiate the data channel. The data channel once initiated by the server is sourced from its port 20 to the destination port which was communicated by the client earlier. Let's take a look at the packet capture which is taken on an ASA for an active FTP client. As we can see, the initial packet is initiated by a client going to the server on TCP port 21. Once the three-way handshake is established, the server and client authenticate using the user and pass command. Once the server and client have successfully authenticated one another, the communication proceeds further and here is where we see the port command. Now we can, we can see this command being sent by the client towards the server. The port command carries information about the port on which the data channel should be initiated. It also tells the server what IP address it should be connecting to. After the server deems the port command successful, we can see that the server initiates the data channel. The data channel is being initiated by a source port from the server of 20 going to 57762, which is what was negotiated in the port command. The FTP client can also be passive. Now in this case, as usual, the initial command channel is initiated by the client itself on the destination port of the server of TCP 21. Once the client and server successfully authenticate, a pass fee command is sent by the client. This tells the server that the client is going into passive mode, which also makes the server send port information back to the client on which it should initiate the data channel. Now, when the data channel is being initiated by the client this time, we see that it uses a source port usually of N plus 1, adding 1 to the initial command channel port that it opened, going to the destination port P, which the server communicates. The captured here is an example of passive FTP client taken on an ASA. Now, we can see that the client initiates the initial command channel as usual. Once authentication is successful, as we can see here, the client should send a pass fee command. Once this pass fee command is sent, it tells the server that it needs to provide the client with the port and IP address information to which the data channel should be initiated. This command is very similar to the port command in its contents. As you can see, it's a six tuple which is sent the first four octets occupying the IP address to which the data channel should be initiated. The next two octets are used to calculate the port on which the client will initiate the data channel. Typically, the calculation is done by multiplying the fifth octet with 256 and adding the sixth octet to it. Once this is done, the client duly obliges and initiates the SYN packet for the data channel. In line with the objective of this video, Let's move on to how FTP inspection works on the ASA and what it accomplishes. So the first thing that FTP inspection does is it prepares dynamic data connections. 
What that means is as seen in previous slides, after the exchange of the port command and the port information between the client and server, a secondary channel is open for the data connection. The ASA ensures that this connection is allowed. The second objective of FTP inspection is to track the FTP command response sequence. It also generates an audit trail to ensure that FTP related logs are collected. One of the most important objectives of FTP inspection would be to change the embedded IP address in the payload, particularly in scenarios where NAT is involved over the, over the firewall. With respect to the ASA, FTP can either be inbound or outbound. As you can see, in the outbound scenario, we have client on the inside of the ASA connecting to a server which is on the outside across the internet. In inbound FTP, the situation is exactly the opposite. A client on the internet is trying to connect to a server which sits behind a firewall. Let's now take a look at various FTP scenarios from the firewall's perspective. Based on inbound or outbound FTP, active or passive client, we have four scenarios, first of which is on the screen. You can see that the client over on the internet is trying to connect to a server which sits behind a firewall. Now the configuration required on the ASA is very standard when you compare that to any server which is hosted behind the firewall. We have a static one-to-one -one NAT, NATing the server's private IP address to a publicly routable IP on the internet. In addition to this, because the initial connection is initiated by the client which sits on the outside, we need to have TCP port 21 on the server open on the ASA. Once this is done, the server and client authenticate. The dynamic data channel should be opened by FTP inspection. Bear in mind that the ASA allows all outbound traffic by default. And since this is an active client, the data channel is going to be initiated by the server. Hence, no additional configuration is required to allow the data connection. Also, inspection for FTP traffic would not be required in this scenario. Let's take a look at the second scenario. Once again, FTP is inbound. However, the client is passive. Client sitting on the internet is connecting to the FTP server behind the firewall. And the configuration on the ASA with respect to NAT and ACL is exactly same as the previous scenario. The only change is the need for inspection on the ASA. Now the data channel is going to be opened by the client in this case. In addition to this, once the client sends the pass v command, the port information is going to be sent by the server. The ASA's inspection engine would need to look into the packet capture and change the embedded IP address to the NATed IP of the server. Once this is done, the client will initiate the data channel. Inspection on the ASA would need to open a dynamic pinhole for this secondary data channel. We'll take a look at how this works under the hood in packet captures in the next slide. Here we can see the packet capture that has been taken on the inside interface of the ASA for a passive client for inbound FTP. We can see that the public IP address of the client connects to the private IP address of the server. Once the initial exchange is complete and success successfully the client and server authenticate, we'll see that the client sends the pass v command. Once the pass v command is sent, the server sends the port information over. Now this packet capture has been collected on the ASA with inspection turned off. Let's go on to the packet capture on the outside interface which will show that inspection is turned off. As you can see, the embedded IP address in the payload of the packet remains unchanged. In addition to this, the client which tries to connect to the data port is having to re repeatedly retransmit the SYN packet. This is because the dynamic pinhole has not been opened by the ASA as inspection is turned off. Here we have the same set of captures from the ASA on the inside. Now this time, I have inspection enabled on the ASA. Let's see what the difference is. Now the packet captured on the inside is not expected to look any different. Of course, we do not see any issues with the data channel. 
But let's see how that works out on the outside interface of the ASA. Looking at this capture, we see that the passp command is sent as is. Now, when the server sends the port information over to the client, we see that instead of the private IP address of the server, the public NATed IP address of the server is sent over to the client. The client now initiates a data connection on the port which is calculated from the information in this command. And it successfully goes through because the ASA has opened up a dynamic pinhole as well. Let's now move on to the next scenario. Now this is outbound FTP with an active client. The client here is behind a firewall and it's trying to access an FTP server which is over on the internet. Outbound because the initial connection is from the client to the server in the out direction with respect to the firewall. The basic configuration on the firewall here that I have mentioned in this slide is optional. I mean, it would work even without this NAT, but then usually we have this NAT configured on firewalls to allow internet access to users on the inside. This scenario requires us to have inspection on the ASA. The inspection can be configured under the modular policy framework of the ASA. Now we have, usually we do have policy map called global policy and a class map called inspection underscore default within which we can configure inspect FTP and apply this policy globally. Once again, the client will send the initial command channel request to the server. It will also send the port command from inside to outside where the embedded IP address would need to be changed to the NATed IP address so that the server can then initiate the data channel for which the ASA would need to have a dynamic pinhole open. With the help of packet captures again, we'll take a look at what the ASA does with respect to FTP inspection. Once again, I have a packet capture here from the inside and outside interfaces of the ASA. First, with inspection disabled. As we can see, once the initial exchange is complete and the client and server successfully authenticate, a port command is sent by the client. Now this port command carries the private IP address of the client, which is on the inside. With inspection disabled, the outside capture should reflect the same IP address. As we can see, that is the case here. Also, the data channel which is trying to be initiated by the server on the outside is repeatedly dropped by the ASA and retransmissions are sent for the SYN packet because a dynamic pinhole is not opened as inspection is turned off. Now here's a sample of the same scenario with inspection enabled on the ASA. On the inside, of course, we would see that the port command would carry the private IP address. Moving on to the outside interface capture from the ASA, we'd expect that the inspection engine would translate the embedded IP, which it duly does. Because inspection is turned on, when the server on the outside tries to initiate a connection for the data channel, a dynamic pinhole is already open and the connection is successful. With that, we come to the last scenario. A passive client here is trying to connect to a server which is over on the internet. Now, the initial connection is established when the client sends a SYN packet to the server on TCP port 21. Once they successfully authenticate, the client will send a passp command. The server this time will send the information for the port and IP address on which the client needs to initiate the data connection. The client initiating the data connection would be, again, outbound traffic. Note that the port information is coming from the public internet to the private inside interface of the ASA, for which no embedded IP translation is needed. In addition, the data channel is also initiated by the client, which is outbound traffic, and this is by default allowed by the firewall. Hence. This scenario does not require any inspection for FTP on the ASA. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for choosing Cisco.